Okay. Should Christians celebrate Halloween? Absolutely, because Halloween and the days that follow are Christian festivals. This is a Christian, a Catholic Christian series of three days. Halloween, of course, you probably know this, Lila, the, the word comes from the old English, um, All Hallows Eve, All Hallows Eve, Halloween, and it's the Eve of All Saints Day, Hallows Day, All Hallows is All Saints. So it's the vigil of the great solemnity of all saints, and that's why we have it at all, because in, in Catholic Christian life, we mark these biggest and holiest days of the year with a vigil and sometimes with preparation even before the vigil. So this is the eve of a great solemnity, which is a holy day of obligation for Catholics now and a great festival throughout the Universal Church, All Saints Day. Now, some people say that we took a pagan holiday and we made it into a Christian holiday. Is there any truth to that? There's also these accusations about Christmas. Yes. So, no, I mean, it's easy It's easy for people who hate Christ and his church to try to make these associations, which might be founded in some kind of um, similarities or certainly cultural, um, the, the cultural bleed from one group of people to another is real. But no, it's not, it, it would be an oversimplification and also wrong to say that Christianity simply took pagan festivals and put this veneer of faith on top of them. It That's way too simple and that's not exactly what happened. So. In the case of Halloween, it's even farther from the truth. The late 19th century, early 20th century accusations about uh, about Halloween being a pagan thing that was somehow baptized by Roman Catholics is just that was just kind of um, Protestant vitriol against um, against Catholics. You know, our our, our country, the, the United States, was founded as a Protestant Christian nation, and there was always a real fear and even um, mistrust and sometimes a real kind of persecution of, uh, against the Catholic Christians. So when all of these English and Irish and Belgian and Dutch immigrants were coming, especially at the end of the 19th century, they brought with them all of their mm -hmm. Catholic customs, including the things surrounding All Saints Day and All Souls Day and Halloween, the eve, the eve of those feasts. And the the most kind of anti-Catholic Protestants were like, "Whoa, <laughs> what are these? What is this? Trick or like, treaters more, doing? <laughs> more reason to um to put the smack so, the so smack down on the Catholics. When those Catholic immigrants came into the United States in the late twentieth or the late nineteenth uh, and yes. and twentieth century, did and you're, they kind of brought the tradition of All Souls All All Saints Eve and then All Souls Day All Saints Day. Yes, and so Halloween. So you're saying there's sort of this emergence of Halloween in the United States. What, what did it look like then? Were they trick-or-treating? Well, so... Um, and what is trick-or-treating? Okay, it's good. How is that Christian? <laughs> okay, so I think two kind of two paths we can follow there, Lila. One, just the nature of Catholic festivity, Catholic festivals, and the customs that go along with that, very culturally um, founded and particular to different parts of especially European culture. Mm -hmm. So many of the, um, we might say, cultural trappings of the way that Catholics celebrate festivals comes with them when they come to the new world. And there's certainly some of that with um, Halloween and All Souls Day and All Saints Day, All Saints Day, All Souls Day. So it's, it's perfectly normal across all of Catholic cultures to pray for the dead, to spend time in the cemetery on All Souls Day and to prepare for that on All Saints Day. So to be in those places where we have laid our beloved mm. ones to rest, decorating their graves, bringing flowers, carrying candles, washing their tombstones. And uh, in some cultures, they would even spend the whole of November 2nd in the cemetery, having a picnic, praying for the dead, remembering with great fondness their, their loved ones who are members of the church, right? Just so, because they've died there, they haven't, they haven't, they're, they're still members of the church and members of our family. So, mm -hmm. so along with that comes these wonderful customs. You, you mentioned trick or treating in certain parts of European culture on the, the vigil. So the Eve before all saints day, people would go asking door to door, um, for little sweets and say, you know, I'll pray for your, those who died in your family this last year. If you'll give me a little sweet, you know, a little mm -hmm. soul cake, they called that, or so you give me a treat. And I will do this alms for you. I will pay this alms for your beloved dead. I'll say a prayer for them. And so that kind of door-to-door -door asking for gifts and exchanging prayers for those gifts mm -hmm. for the de dead, that's the Catholic uh, underpinning foundation of trick-or-treating. 
those words trick or treating, I think that's a much more modern invention. So. Yeah, the trick word, I think some people are concerned it has to do with some sort of witchcraft or, you know, I've heard yes. people, you know, concerned, you know, Christians concerned and Catholics, but mostly, you know, evangelicals concerned. That's like a a cult reference. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, that's not where it comes from. That might be what people interpret it mm -hmm. to mean now. But the trick, as I understand, and I could be wrong about this, but as, as I understand that the that English root of that is more about if the, a little bit of a play, you know, this is a the, the tomfoolery of Catholic festivity. You might think about Mardi Gras, for example, mm -hmm. or other times of the year when there's this wonderful partying in preparation for serious praying. Mm. And there's, there's a fair amount of that also in the history of Halloween. So the trick is I'm going to play a little trick on you, more like I'm going to um, I'm, I'm going to um, make a fool of you or do something um, tongue-in-cheek. Steal in your cheek, trash cans. Something like that, you know, <laughs> tongue-in-cheek kind of um, play a game on you um, if you don't give me your – give me the, the, the candy. Now, <laughs> again, it's all – that in Catholic life, that's mm -hmm. all – that's all in the context of people understand mm -hmm. that that's all on good fun. Yes. And also it's not about this overlay of weird neo-paganism. So that part, yes. that's a very contemporary kind of layer of interpretation on Halloween. I want to get to different. that. I want to get to the ghouls and the goblins and the ghosts. Okay. Because, you know, my neighborhood, for example, we walk down the street and there's like houses with these extremely scary, <laughs> you yes. know, figures. So I, I want to ask about that. But you said something really interesting. You said the tradition is connected to, you know, it goes back to prayers for the dead. Yes.